Do what you say you are going to do. Why is it that so many people act like they're about something and say that they're going to do something when in their minds they know and in their hearts they understand that they will never do what they say they're going to do? Yes, I'm going to show up at this time knowing I'm not even going to show up. Yeah, sure, I'll support you when you do this and knowing that it's never going to happen. And yeah, 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 don't worry, I'll get you those photos by next week or by tomorrow or by tonight. Never happens. Why is it so hard to do exactly what you say you're going to do? Not only are you betraying the person that you're speaking to, but you're betraying yourself and you're teaching yourself that you are incapable of keeping your own word and that the weight of your word is nothing. And when you fail at that, my question to you is, what can you truly do successfully? This is a, a interesting topic, a very pressing topic because this is something that we've been encountering a lot recently. Um, there's a lot of people out there who are not what they portray themselves to be. And the more that you venture into the world of entrepreneurship and trying to grow yourself and make yourself a better human being, you'll start to realize that. You'll start to realize that a lot of people are putting up facades to try to come off like they're something that they're not. But, you know, there's, there's those people who if they went off to battle, if they went off to war, once the shots started ringing out, who would actually stand there and fire back. But there's also going to be those people who will run away because the pressure is too immense. And that's most people. Most people, when faced with reality, when faced with the, you know, hardships of life and of battle, they might say that they're about something. But when it's time for Urban to meet the road, they run away. Or they don't respond, they don't answer, they don't text back, what have you. And that's something that we've been encountering a lot recently, and I think it's for a multitude of reasons. But one thing that you can count on to have and grow your success in anything is being able to just do what the fuck you're supposed to do. You'd be surprised how simple, in my opinion, it's not like we have a million dollars or a million plus dollars yet, but I know that it's going to happen. Why? Because it's really all about doing the hard, simple things. And when I say that, I mean, they're simple things to do, but it's hard because you're going to have to do them over and over and over again, even when you don't feel like it. I get a lot of texts, I get a lot of emails, what have you, that I don't feel like responding to. I really don't. Especially me being not as much of a talkative person in general. I don't want to respond to most of this shit. I don't care about what the fuck you have going on that much to where I want to jeopardize my personal peace and internal peace to deal with what the fuck you have going on. But I do it anyway. So, not only does that help me build the capability to have persistence and do things whenever I don't feel like doing things, but it also lets people realize that I'm a person that they can rely on. And a lot of people, whenever they encounter something where they don't feel like doing something, they quit or they don't start something or they don't respond back. Now, imagine that you had a deal on the table. You didn't know how much for, but it was a potential possibility that doing business with this person could benefit you somehow. You just don't know how much yet. You say, hmm. I don't really feel like going to that meeting. I don't really feel like answering that call. It doesn't seem like, you know, I really, it, it seems like a good idea, but it's not, you know, 
a million or billion dollars right off the bat. So, you know, I'm just not going to do it. Right. Then come to find out it was Jeff Bezos and his team asking you to do something or the team that you were talking to was in direct contact with Jeff Bezos. And that was a project, a side project that he was working on. But because you didn't feel like it, you didn't feel like reaching out. You didn't feel like taking the initiative to do what the fuck that you knew that you had to do. You missed out on an opportunity. And that's what most people don't realize is every door that you see. Yes, it is another door, but you don't know what's on the other side of it. So if you don't take the opportunity and initiative to open that door and at least see things through, at least see what the fuck is on the side, step into the fucking door and see, OK, this is what's going on. Hmm, uh, OK. Or, oh, shit, this is this is actually better than what I thought it would be. You are shortchanging yourself in life and in business so, so much. And that's what a lot of people do. And it infuriates me because how the fuck do you think that you're going to be successful if you don't show initiative and you don't say or do the things that someone's counting on you for? that you said that you were going to do. It's simple. It's so simple, yet people just won't do it. And I don't understand why. Maybe it's just because it's not cool to do or society doesn't, you know, praise them immediately for it. Or, you know, people are just lazy. Like it could be all these reasons combined. But again, these simple things can give you access to a new life for you and your future generations, but you just don't pick up the phone. You don't call, you don't respond, you don't go. You'd rather pick up the phone and call your friends and talk about bullshit. You'd rather text some girl that you know doesn't really like you like that. You'd rather go to the bar instead of going to that meeting or going to that event, that networking event that you know is better for you. That's what you'd rather do. So you'll expel the energy to do those things but not to do the things that you know are right that could lead you to a better future. And it's, I'm tired of fucking dealing with people that think that way. And that's what we're surrounded by, which is also very annoying. You mentioned something very interesting there when you were talking about you don't know why people don't do that or why people do that, why they don't keep their word. Is it because they it's not cool because it's it's frowned upon is it because xyz but i think i have a very good understanding of why people don't keep their word and that's because they don't know the definition of a bond they don't know the meaning behind a friendship or brotherhood or fellowship or even caring for another human being in all capacity and i understand how society has shaped that because we live in a world full of social media, which is trying to find a balance between self-hate and vanity to engage us. So we become increasingly conceited and vain and push others away to the point where we don't even care about others' well-being, let alone our local family or our friends and, and siblings. All we give a fuck about is the attention we get and the image that we have. And... There's a saying here that your word is your bond. And I like the saying because it means that your word is a representation of your connection to another person. And if you promise something, and this is where I use the word promise lightly, because if you, in my opinion, if you say something to me, that's a promise. I take your words with full weight and full sincerity. If you promise you're going to do something and you fail to do it, I understand the, the bond that you hold with me. Your words hold no weight and you could give less of a shit about me. And let me tell you one thing. There's nothing more disrespectful to look somebody in the eyes and tell them you're going to do something and not do it. You might as well have spit in their face and stuck your finger in their nose and fucking wiggled it around. It's some stupid shit. Why even bother? Why even bother? Be honest, be truthful, and tell them straight to their face, 
I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to be your friend. I'm not going to be able to make this deadline. I don't think I want to do what you, I don't think I can live up to the potential that you see in me. I think that you could be this great entrepreneur, this great business owner. I see how you network. I see how you communicate. It's perfectly fine to look back and say, you know what, Jose, I appreciate the fact that you see that, but that's not the life I want. Perfect. Why even try to play along? It doesn't make sense. It's disrespectful. You're spitting on somebody else's capacities and visions of you and disrespecting them because you're wasting their time. Because there's some of us that I know that have the capacity to see things that other people can't. And it's a limited resource. And for it to be wasted on you, I think why people do that shit, which is funny because Shannon Sharp has a, a quote that he said, I think his grandfather said, and I don't want to fuck it up, but basically it was like, you know, if you're trying to avoid something, the very thing that you're avoiding is a thing that's going to lead to like your fucking demise or some shit like that, you know, where a lot of people are scared to do something or scared to say something or scared to, you know, have a conversation. But the very thing that you try to avoid is usually the thing that comes back and bites you in the ass in the long term. So not having that conversation, not being upfront for whatever reason, you might say, well, I don't want to disappoint Jose, so I don't want to tell him this initially. But if you told someone or if you told Jose and were honest with him about why you felt like that you weren't ready to do something or what have you, initially, he wouldn't be disappointed. He'd be like, oh, OK, thanks for the honesty. I'll go ask someone else. However, I'd be, I would feel so respected. Exactly. But you know what would cause disappointment? You not being honest, then us finding out two months later or a month later, or a week later, that you're not going to do the thing that you said that you were going to do or are incapable of doing it. And then you have nothing to say for yourself when you're called upon, when you're reached out to or whatever. That is disappointing. And that's the very thing that you probably try to avoid initially but you caused because you just didn't take the initiative and you didn't have enough fucking balls to say, I'm not ready or I'm not good enough or I can't do it. A lot of people are scared of the word no. They're scared of saying no and they're scared of hearing no. However, if you view the word no with a different perspective, light and lens, then I think the world around you will begin to change. And I say this, Corvette, I'll say this because if you're willing to tell someone no, to me, that means that you have probably more of a spine, more character, and more respect for yourself than someone who can't say no, because there's a lot of people who are just yes men. And there's a lot of people who are just going to say yes, because they can't fucking say no. And when you do that, you're wasting not only your time, but everyone's time in that situation. But if someone is honest and says, Hey, no, I can't do this. Or, Hey, no, I don't want to do that. Or, Hey, no, I don't want to do that. Not only does it save you time and the other person time now, we all have a very clear understanding of what can and can't be done, which allows us to be able to pivot and maneuver to a different pathway where we can do things or where we can work with someone else who can do that. So a lot of people out there that have this problem of not being a man of their word can't say fucking no, because if they could, they would be a man of their fucking word. But that's something 
that you have to just like talking to girls or doing anything that you want to do, you have to get over because there's a lot of opportunity on the other side of being transparent, whether it behooves you or not, whether it makes you look like the good person or not. Being transparent and honest is another key to success because once you're able to do that, people know that they can rely on you for candid and honest feedback and candid and honest responses and candid and honest work. So be a man of your word and also have some fucking cojones to say fucking no, I can't do something. And you're not going to lose respect for that. People will respect you more for that because you know yourself. We know what you can and can't do at the moment. And you're not wasting someone's time. And if you're not wasting someone's time, to me, that allows you to have potentially more of it in the future because I know that you're smart enough and you have enough respect for me and yourself to realize that, hey, me saying yes would be a waste of everyone's time here. So I'm not going to do that. And I respect you for that. And what I find interesting is that back in the day, your word reflected the image of your entire family, your entire bloodline, your entire lineage, because your word was synonymous with your last name. If I told Austin that we were going to meet at a cafe at 8 a.m. and I didn't show up because I forgot, doesn't matter the reason. Austin's now going to think that everybody in my family and my bloodline is imprompt liars who are incapable of coordinating planning and falling in line with what they say they're going to do. There were very real consequences to our actions back in the day. And one of the issues that I believe nowadays is that we're way too forgiving and way too compassionate when it comes to certain things like this. Now, there are certain instances where there are extenuating circumstances and we definitely have to accommodate people, but we're too easy. It's okay for people to not respond. It's okay for people not to show up. It's okay for people to continuously ask for rain checks. It's okay to play with people's schedules. It's okay to play with people's minds. It's okay to play with people's hearts. Why? Deception is a very real thing, but it has its time and its place. Why are we using it so frequently? If not on other people, but on ourselves as well, by deluding ourselves into saying, oh, me rejecting this idea or notion outright is hasty. No, if your heart is on no, then why can't you just say no? You're deceiving not just yourself, but the person in front of you. And that's, that's two times as bad. But if you wanna be a man of your word, it's not that hard. Just mean what you say and say what you mean. But to some people, that's rocket science, so I don't know. And if you're a rocket scientist, congratulations. The AM Club Podcast. Signing up. Mike, Mike, check. The AM Club Podcast.